you know, there may be a few characters, but for the most part, we've met everybody in this this uh, season. You know, we have more than enough going on. <laughs> so I'm a little bit of something you said uh, earlier in regards to her question. Um, you have one of like the most hollow franchises in horror history, but it's it's never been one of those. It's not a slasher movie. Yeah, it's got its very unique style. And uh, especially in the first episode, we saw a lot of loyalty paid to the original. You may use footage from the original, yeah. you have the daggers and the hellhounds are the same. Um, but, you know, how, how did you go about deciding what you would evolve, like how you would keep that feel and keep the fans that, you know, watch this, what, like 40 years ago now? Mm -hmm. it, it entertained present, present day. What do you think the modern day brings into that classic story? What do you mean? The mo you mean just as far as the story? The, 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 in terms of how you wrote it, how you went about telling the story. Well, I think we wanted it grounded in character. You know, ultimately it's a family story. The Omen is basically a family story. And, and you know, there were these uh, adopted parents and, and it turns out he has this other real parents, you know, and, and, and those two forces are at war. So I think it was really, you know, I won't, I'm, I don't want to go uh, uh, say something cliche like the daddy issues. That seems very reductive. But I will say that, you know, there is a heart to that story, you know, that, that you really feel Gregory Peck's pain and anguish when his when his wife is killed. And so and we want those deaths, you know, that, so, so it's not a matter of just putting in twists. You know, we, we really want the 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 gravitas of that film the sense that it's taken place in in a world that is sort of punctured by evil okay we want it to feel like that this isn't a show where we're just going to throw horrific images at people or whatever you know so so for example you know the fact that kelly dies in the first episode and then what happens what would happen after somebody dies you go to a funeral and then what happens after the funeral? You go to back to somebody's house, and then, and then and if these people are war journalists, they would have a type of you know dark humor, or they would be macabre, and they would talk about those deaths. So we really tried to feel what would happen, what would really happen, and yet you have to sort of heighten it by having these these other um, things happen, and, and these other say supernaturally related things. So it's a matter of looking at the filmmaking, keeping it grounded, and really making sure that the story is. Really Rooted in character, that it's not just rooted in plot, you know, and that people are, you know, I'm very proud of the show in the sense that we are, in a lot of senses, but the sense that I believe the steps the characters are taking. You know, we spent a lot of time to to roll out the story, and you know, I'm sure some people might think it's too slow, some people might think it's too fast, but I feel like the story is moving at exactly the right pace for these characters. And that's what we took from that. that so. So just a little bit of clarification. So you're trying to say that you want to make this like a timeless character piece and not like Damien 2000. Well, I don't understand what you mean by Damien 2000. I'm, I'm not sure I'm following the question. Well, you chose to set it in, like, you know, it starts off Damascus, right? Yeah. Which is in modern settings. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking, you know, you have fans that watch this in a more classic setting, and now you have this modern setting. What does that play in? How does that play into it? Well, I think part of it is, you know, let's talk about, you know, the fact that he's a war photographer or the Damascus setting. I think the approach here was to say, that there is already evil in the world. That we did not want to do a, a type of show that feels that the apocalypse is some magical happening that's gonna happen at midnight on such and such a date and it's a matter of you know getting the right talisman and the right spell book and all of that. We didn't wanna play the magic. We wanted to play uh, examine questions of evil and God and suffering and compassion and humanity and all of that and that's why he's a war photographer okay he's bearing witness to people's suffering so it is grounded in the world and I felt like the original film was grounded in the world you know uh, uh, that, it, that that's why it resonates it didn't feel magical to me even though there is sort of a magical realism to it you know like I'm thinking of where the, the guy's running through the park the priest is running through the park and gets impaled so, uh, you know, that was part of that inspiration, and, and I think that's why, it, you know, if look at the escalator death. That feels, you know, I mean, that seems to be a fear that we touched on. <laughs> I was surprised at how dark that played. So it, it's a matter of, of keeping it 
um, raw and and sort of honest and, and grounded, as opposed to letting the special effects and the magic and a complicated mythology take over. When I watch shows like that, I check out. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I connect with the characters, and I want my characters to feel desperate. I want to feel like they have no good choices. You know, I want to feel like they're fucking up. I want to feel like, no, oh, don't go there, but they got it. You know, I want to, that's how I enjoy films, and that's the feeling I wanted in the film, in, in the show. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.